Hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me in my shop. Today is March 30th. March 30th. 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. So there's another day coming. March 31st tomorrow. So um, before I get going here, I'm a little excited. I just watched a uh, short video on some uh, AI-based uh, uh, audio processing. And uh, it was more around music and that, but it could be for anything. And I'll just tell you what, what I watched the guy do. Okay, he downloaded a program called Audacity. Audacity is a free program people use to record music and, and other stuff. I, I had it on my earlier computers. I haven't downloaded another copy of it just yet, but I certainly intend to. Then he downloaded uh, some uh, packages to associate with that software. All this is free, completely free. Uh, installed it into Audacity. It's just copying it into a certain folder. Then he ran the Audacity software. Some more options are in there. He put up a piece of music. It was actually an advertisement, a uh, short jing jingle type advertisement uh, from some radio station somewhere. And in it is music playing and some people singing. He then ran this process, an AI based process on it. And what it did was it took the two stereo tracks and created four or five more stereo tracks below it. And each track was one instrument out of the music. So there's a drum track, a guitar track, uh, whatever else track, and the voice track of the singers. And they're completely isolated. You, you would never imagine they came from a piece of what to call it, a piece of uh, music, a piece of comprehensive music. Shocking, shocking. All free. Uh, the processing takes place on your own computer. It's not even being done uh, on a big server up on the internet. It's your local computer doing it. This is what's coming at us. It's coming at us like a tsunami. And I personally believe just about everything we do is about to change uh, dramatically except coffee. I'll still be drinking coffee out of a cup. I'm pretty sure of that. But everything else in our lives is about to be changed, hopefully, for the better by a long shot. So I'm pretty excited about this stuff. If you're not paying attention, start paying attention because uh, it's, 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 you're already using it and you don't even know it. AI. Wow. Okay, enough of that excitement there. Now we're going to work on the radio. So last uh, video uh, I determined that there was a small positive charge building up on the grid of the output tube almost certainly because of a leak through the blocking capacitor which is the one that that's here I also checked the uh, um, bias resistor the cathode bias resistor and everything's fine there bias voltage seems correct around minus seven or so that seems good enough so the name of the game today is, change, right now anyway, change this capacitor out, run the radio, see if the positive voltage has disappeared from the grid, and test this capacitor on my capacitor checker, because this is a great opportunity for me to calibrate my capacitor checker, because I know what this capacitor is doing in this radio, at least I think I do, leaking slightly. So slightly leaking one, when I do the test on my capacitor tester, the result is the result of a slightly leaking capacitor, very slight. We'll see. That's good. Okay, why don't we do that right now? We can do that right now. Let me get my warmer, get my capacitor checker warming up. Oh my gosh. Audacity. That a program Audacity has been around for a long time. It's an open source piece of software. And uh, I'm sure it's quite popular. It has many, many features, all free for doing audio recording and uh, audio manipulation, you know, cut and paste, all that kind of stuff. Um, and now, because I haven't used it for about a year, uh, I suspect it's it's got, it's already, like, like so many pieces of software, it has so many features, how are you ever even going to know they're, they're in there <laughs> to find and use? So this capacitor looks to be in great shape. Okay, the, the wax on it is, uh, whoops, a little bit missing there maybe. But really it's around the ends here, I think, where you really have the uh, chance for moisture to go in. Especially where the wire wiggles a bit. And when you're installing it, uh, you're going to wiggle this wire a bit and you're going to kind of drill an opening in the wax here, unfortunately. 
Okay, let's put it on the tester. So the radio says it's leaking a bit. Let's see what my tester says. Okay, 50 volts, does it leak? There we go. Popped right open. 150. Popped right open. Hmm. Well, that's interesting now because this is suggesting there's virtually, like, this is a good capacitor. That's how I would rank it right now. Let's try, what's the rating on it? Is that 200 or 600? <laughs> oh, son of a gun. Oh, I just bashed my head here. <laughs> oh, son of a gun. I'm going to bash my head right on this thing here. I have some kind of dent in my forehead now. My wife's going to ask me about it. I know it. She's going to say, 600 volts. She's going to say, where'd that dent come from? Then it doesn't match the other one. Okay. 250 volts. Now it's only partly. Partly done. 350. And then now it won't open. So a brand new good capacitor will open on the highest setting here, which is 450 volts. will pop right open. This one is, you know, for a capacitor coming out of a radio, this is in really, really good shape. Let's go back down to, usually I find... Poor capacitors don't do well at 50 volts. Look at that, you wouldn't know there's anything going on. 150 volts, most old capacitors, the eye won't open. This one's great. Give it a moment here. Uh, so you're not going to put it back in, but... what? So testing, you know, taking out one capacitor and testing it gives you a hint of the condition of the rest. Um, is it a guarantee? No, not at all. So this is a, looks like 006 there. There's a lot of wax on it. 05, 0.05 capacitor. So I'll put one in and we'll repeat the uh, test and see if, the, see if that tiny leak through here was what was causing the, the small increase in voltage. Actually, it wasn't really that small, was it? Because it took took a long time. That's interesting. It took a long time for the charge to build up on the grid. I remember I was talking about a bucket, filling a bucket, and you have a small flow in and a small flow out. But maybe it's a big flow out, so the small flow in will never fill the bucket. Or maybe it's a slow, a small flow out and a big flow in, so the bucket gets full quickly. This one is a small flow out and a small, small flow in, taking a long time. Well, I guess it would be a small, small, small flow out and a small flow in, taking a long time to fill up the bucket, which is what we were watching when the meter was going up. How, how high it was going to go, we don't know. We, we, we don't know. I didn't let it go all that way. Okay, let me change the capacitor and we'll see what the result is. Okay, let's test the uh, radio out, make sure it's still working. Volume down. Okay, dim bulb's doing the right thing. I have the voltmeter ready here. Five volts to start, in case something really terrible has gone wrong. Like, uh, there's no sound. That's the crackling. I don't think it's the switch here or the volume control.
So I'm not trying to take a reading right now. I'm just banging parts <laughs> to see if any of them are sensitive for this noise. Seems like I always come down into this area. I shouldn't have my way on <laughs> <laughs> the meter's going crazy while I'm doing this. Okay, we won't worry about the noise yet. There we go. So, 5 volts full scale. We shouldn't see a thing here. Goody, goody. Nothing. 1.5 volts full scale. Last time I did this, the meter came up to about here and then drifted continuously upwards. Up in this range is where I stopped the test, but who knows how high it was going to go. Did you see the meter jump up just a little bit? Let's try it again here. Getting a very similar. And it's going up. Whoop. Well, so there is another effect where a grid can make itself, well, it can make itself negative, but I got this coming up positive here. I'm going to clip this on. might be a little noisy. No. Clip this on here. Okay. Well, there's lots of room in my head for learning stuff, so uh, I'm going to learn something here. So I'm going to leave this meter running, leave the radio just like this, and we'll see how high this gets, because it's basically doing the same thing it did with the last you know what this might indicate that the uh, resistor that's attached to the grid here and then attached to uh, B minus maybe that resistor is open that, that would explain the building up of this voltage with no uh, with a brand new capacitor there look at that it's just doing exactly the same thing This is getting significant now. We're up around one volt, and uh, it's not slowing down. I was going to go away, drink some coffee, and come back, but I think I can keep an eye on this. The radio is getting quieter. This is probably quieting the radio. It's be the kind of thing where I turn my radio on and it works great, but four minutes later I can't hear it. Something like this. Okay, that's that's just getting a. Uh, I mean, nothing's going to blow up here, but, but this is just continuously going up. Is it going? going to shut her off. If, if the bleed-off resistor is not bleeding anything off, then maybe that voltage will go all the way up to the B-plus voltage that it's blocking. Um, so let's uh, let's just put. I was going to look at the schematic, but there's no need for that. Let's check this resistor. So the one I'm talking about, right beside the clip lead here. Let me get this off. Okay, and we can read the resistance. Uh, I think I'd like to use this meter here for that. So it's supposed to be. Uh, let's see, it's yellow, uh, that pink color is purple and yellow. So that's four, four, seven, 470 K. So it's half a million ohms there, half a million. So I've got this set to just above half a million here. Make sure it's working. And we're going to take this reading in circuit. And we'll see what happens. Well, it's definitely not open. If anything, it's gone slightly high. Instead of four, 470, it's 490. That's not enough to do anything. This is a curious thing to me. I had one other radio with exactly the same experience, in which I thought I was going to quell a leak. You know, we, we, we did see. Now, now look what's happened here. Took the, took the capacitor out, tested it, tested really good for a leak, as if it doesn't have much of a leak. 
then I assume, well, that tiny amount of leak is what's causing this charge buildup. I replace the capacitor with one, I'm sure there's no leak in this. I see exactly the same effect. Either both capacitors are leaking charge at a tiny rate and that's causing this, that's not happening. That's not happening. Then where is the positive voltage coming from? on the grid. You know, I'm measuring it to B minus. Let's just take a look at the schematic. Maybe that's not the right place. I should measure, measure directly to the cathode of the tube. Let's just take a look at what's... Yeah, because there's a cathode resistor. Um, no, on the, let's take a look at the schematic. Okay, here we are. So we're looking at this resistor. There's the 470K, or half a million ohms here. That's the capacitor I just replaced. 0.005. No, no. It was a 0 0.05. Did I read it wrong? If I put in too big a capacitor, what happens there? Because I may have put one in 10 times as big as it's supposed to be. So I'm looking at the capacitor here again. And Yes, it is. It's zero, zero, 005. So I've got a capacitor in there that's 10 times too big. Um, you know, what, what would that do? Probably not much of anything, really. Um, but I think we should probably, 10 times is quite a change. So we we'll probably change this out with a proper size. Um, oh, so here's the 150 ohm cathode resistor. Uh, there's a positive voltage here from seven volts which means the grid is then minus seven volts to the cathode which is kind of what we want and the grid steadily floats higher while i'm reading i've got my like the positive lead of the voltmeter here i got the negative lead on the b minus right here why why would that not work um The, like, to, to get a voltage here, there has to be a current flowing through this resistor, a positive current. Um, it, it's got to come from here. Where else could it come from? Good question. Um, am I chasing ghosts? Uh, uh, you know, with some regularity, I chase ghosts around these radios. Uh, hmm. Uh, ah. <laughs> so uh, what can happen here uh, as the electrons are flying past the grid some electrons will strike the, the grid and end up on the grid part, part of the grid's voltage it'll become negative with these extra electrons but that's not what we're measuring we're not measuring it going negative we're measuring it going positive positive you know what I'm going to do I'm going to put my own I'm going to read right from here to here because maybe uh, I've got this in the circuit I've got this in the reading in the reading rather I, I gotta read straight from here to here maybe I'm getting a miss a miss uh, I, I, I don't I don't I, I don't know <laughs> yeah I should be it should be the uh, yeah I don't okay enough from that you know what it's time for some coffee that's for sure Okay, so I've got the negative lead of the meter on the cathode, like this. The positive lead of the meter, I'm going to be touching the grid here. Zero. That's good, because the radio's not on. Okay, here we go. Switch on. Oops. Okay, switch on again. There we go. Yeah, you see the meter kind of react there when I turned it on. I'm just holding the other lead in my hand. Okie doke. Why am I getting such a... So I really want this to say something like minus 7 or minus 10.
Every time I turn the radio on from a cold, it makes that static on the on the warming up. I'm not sure what to make of this. Um, minus four. That's worse than what I had before. <laughs> Is it going up? Oh, that was interesting. So the staticky sounds, the sound going through the tube, the audio signal going through the tube may, may, may influence us a bit, I guess. What the heck is going on? What the heck is going on? So this is the part of doing this that I really like, where things just don't add up and I got no clue. <laughs> yeah, that's the fun part. Okay, I'm going to try to clip this on the grid without blowing myself up. What is making so that staticky, crashy sound can also be from a vacuum tube, uh, the failure inside the vacuum tube, progressing failure. Okay, I wanted to do this so I wasn't holding it on the uh, holding the probe on, so we get make sure because sometimes you hold a probe on right it, it kind of makes contact kind of roughly and it can influence the uh, reading so now the radio's gone quiet and this has gone steady we're not on full power but we're pretty close 104 volts so what happens if we go with full power add a couple more volts to it look at this it's getting a little more negative now so the book showed minus seven and a half I may wander up and down a little bit because the house voltage is wandering up and down a little bit and that's going to be reflected in any reading you're, you're, you're taking, most any reading you're taking, a little bit. It just seems to be going down, down, down. Why are you going down? The same reason it goes up. And the reason is, I don't know. That's the reason. Also, I'm suffering from first time I've taken a close look at this like this, <laughs> and I don't normally try to measure these things. Uh, you know, we are we do have a meter on the grid. The meter's drawing some current from the grid circuit to operate a very tiny amount, but tiny amounts make a big difference right here. That's why we're concerned about the capacitor leaking. The tiny amount of charges. So this is probably reflective of the tubes continuing to warm up to their absolute maximum operating temperature. That's my guess of what's happening here. Another possibility is we're draining all the water out of the Great Lakes trying to power the radio at Niagara Falls, at the power plant at Niagara Falls. We're just draining all the water out of the Great Lakes. Well, let's try turning up the volume and see what happens. Where's that? Shouldn't really do anything. And I, I, you know, this is jumping around more than I would expect it. But the thing about these digital meters is the numbers are flashing around. If this was on a, a indicating meter, we might not even see movement in the pointer. Like this is, the, you know, the third significant digit out here. There's a tiny variation going on. Well, I'll take that back. <laughs> it's jumping all over the place. So what I'm sitting here trying to figure out in my head is, uh, is this okay? I mean, the radio works, everything's fine. The grid is negative to the cathode, but just not by the, by about half the voltage I would, I would be happy seeing there. Okay, why don't we read the, uh, use this other meter, and we'll read the grid potential 
to B minus. We'll see what that is. Let's first read the same voltage, compare these two meters. Should read the same thing, but this is an older meter and its calibration can be off. Volt scale. It's, ups it's upscale already, just from just from reading the air. Okay, same same reading as the other meter. This is now reading down to minus three and a half. So on the three scale, we'll go right over. So put on the ten scale, three and a half is right here. Okay, so it's saying it's under three. And the other meters saying three and a half, so I think this guy's probably not not as accurate as I thought. I, I tested it for accuracy once, and it seemed really good. Am I reading the right scale? Yeah, ten, three. So that says three. If you notice, the pointer doesn't jump around at all, whereas the other meter has a you know insignificant digits flipping around. So that's, this is now reading basically 0.32 or 3.2. Oh, you know what? That's matching the other meter now. So that's 3.2 on here. And the other meter is 3. Point, yeah, they're very close. Good. Now we're going to use this to read the grid voltage relative to B minus. We got a positive voltage. Same, same, same voltage. What am I doing here? What am I doing? <laughs> I'm not drinking enough coffee. Hmm. So, so this is saying the grid is minus three relative to the cathode. This is saying the grid is positive uh, 3 relative to the chassis. Now let's look at the cathode relative to the chassis. I'm going to flip this that way, I think. And so the actual cathode resistor voltage is closer to, to 7 volts. All we're getting for a real bias. I wish whatever it was was doing that would really show its hand. Come on, man. Is that just a coincidence? There's no reason to think poking this is necessarily going to identify the source, but it might. If it's something internal, like a, in a capacitor or in the tube, you can poke away all you like. But I have done this in some cases where poking for a long time shows something. as simple as the tube is you know if I pulled the tube out and stuck it back in the sound would disappear it could just be as simple as that I think we're gonna have to try that oh 
I threatened the machine enough and sound went away. Now we're down to 2.5. is the bias on this tube now. I just don't think that's good. I don't think that's right. I still have this big capacitor, but this shouldn't really make any difference in terms of the uh, leak rate through there. And it's taking so long for this to happen. Surely to goodness, a half million resistor would bleed off any charge over that period of time. We have to have a pretty substantial leak into this terminal to not have it all just bleed away through that resistor. Relatively speaking, substantial leak. Did the tube itself generate this? Some some problem in the tube? So what if what if the staticky sound we hear is an indication that the tube has an internal partial short? And uh, <clears throat> that's how this voltage is getting onto the onto the grid. There's some internal tube problem. So I do have tube testers that uh, have methods for detecting a noisy tube. And often they involve hooking up some headphones to the uh, tube tester and then uh, you know, testing the tube and maybe whacking it with your finger or something like that. Or just listening. Just listening on headphones for this kind of sound, this crackly sound. Never done those tests. Never had a tube I was that kind of, you know, concerned about. And this is hit and miss. Like, generally speaking, if a tube or some component is beginning to fail, I don't think it would stop the crackle. What would stop the crackle is a mechanical connection of this sort. Okay. Um, so, what to do here? Didn't I already, did I not test it? I don't think I've tested any of the tubes in this radio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pry out, I'm going to take out the uh, output tube. I'm not going to test it. I'm just going to pull it out and stick it back in. But it's really hot right now, so I'm going to drink some of my cold coffee and then uh, we'll do that. But th this gives you some idea of the charge bleed down rate on that capacitor. Right now, basically this orange capacitor is holding a charge and the charge is bleeding through the resistor. I'm going to give you an idea of how quickly it would go down. And how's that help? I don't know. Yeah, I know, it's coffee time. Thanks for the reminder. I've been very lucky with the uh, radio tubes, never going out, really putting out effort to try to uh, acquire them, but uh, somehow I've managed to do it. So here's my tub of L6 tubes, for instance, a 35L6, and there'll be other tubes in here. There's 22 50L6s in here, and uh, surely to goodness, I can find one that will test good. Stark, and uh, 50L6 from Stark. That's what it says, 50L6, Stark. Stark is known for, well, it's known for test equipment and tube testers, making tubes. You know, this could have been manufactured by a one of the big tube manufacturers, but done to Stark's desires. And uh, definitely it's 50L6 though. Oh, let's try it. Let's try a Stark 50L6. How about that? So I think I'm going to stop the video and get this all set up, and, uh, and we'll run the test here. Okay, way to go. Now I know you can't see the dial here at all. Let's not worry about it until the time comes. So I've set this for a 50L6. I'm going to check the settings here. It's definitely a 50L6. Okay, 50L6. So 47. I think the actual filament voltage is 50, but on this machine for some reason 47. Uh, 8. On the signal level, so that's the highest signal level being applied to it. 18H. H18 and the numbers 07345 07345 
zero six one zero zero six one zero and forty three and C. Okay, we're ready. We are ready. Whoops. We're almost ready. Pilot lights on. Plug this guy in. So what I'm hoping to do here is find a tube that tests well in the tube tester, and then uh, I don't know. So if I do that, you can kind of see it. Well, that's interesting. I should make a little. I should make a little little thing here. Um, find a tube that appears to be in good shape. Even though the tube and the radio, I think I tested it, didn't I? I think I tested it. I tested good. I might be mistaken about that because I've done too many radios to keep it all straight in my head. Get a good tube, stick it in the radio, look for that same voltage effect. We'll see. Grid voltage effect. Here we go. So any leaks in here? So I'm watching the meter, which you can't see unless I stick my hand like this. So we're watching for the pointer to jump up. And it's not. So there's there's no shorts. That little jump there didn't matter. Okay, we're ready for the test. I'm going to read the uh, transconductance, mutual conductance, many names for it. 1030, so 1030, so up past my finger here. There we go. Oh, it's not very good. Not very good. Okay, so I'm going to keep testing more tubes until I find one that shows good. And then we're going to stick it in there. Okay, here's another one. Any shorts? Nothing. Testing now, remember, it just has to come above where my finger is. So it's it's well above. Very steady. Okay, we're gonna try this tube and see if there's a difference in this uh, voltage that we've been reading in the radio. This is usually the point where I start getting the tubes mixed up. Let's pull this out. <laughs> okay. I got, see, my, both my hands are up here on the bench. I'm holding my camera with my foot right now. <laughs> Some kind of Rick Wakeman thing going on here. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So maybe it's time for a new tripod, Jim. This one just keeps, I have one lock that just keeps unlocking itself. Okay, there we go. That was exciting. This tube, I mean, this is where I get the tubes mixed up. I pulled the wrong tube out. Hold out the rectifier tube. That was kind of dumb. Okay, let's get the right one out. Didn't I say something about getting the tube? This is where I get the tubes mixed up. <laughs> uh, and you know what? I had another. I had another one of these experiences. I got to tell it to you. Just like you, sometimes I can't find stuff. Wander around my house trying to find it. I go here, I go there, I think about where did I last leave it, all that kind of stuff. You know what I've done? I've taken out, I've taken the tube out of the radio and stuck it in the tube tester without meaning to, but let's check it out. But I'm gonna tell you my experience here. So I wander around my house looking for stuff. Sometimes I switch into cleanup mode and start straightening things up, hoping that while I spend time I'm gonna find the thing I'm after. Usually I reach a point of just frustration. I just, you know, I cannot find it. And I just get frustrated. I usually just stop. And I start thinking about other stuff. And the next thing you know, I'm looking right at it. The place I stopped, and when I just kind of let, let go of my conscious effort to find the thing, I find myself looking right at it. Now, this has happened way too many times now for me. Now I think in normally what we do in those circumstances is we go, oh, there it is, and we grab it. And we think we just luckily 
looked at it at that moment. But what I'm experiencing is that I'm consciously looking for it really hard, can't find it, can't find it. And when I sort of relax my conscious effort to find it, often I find myself looking right at it. It's freaky. So anyway, I don't know, is that something? Is it something? Am I okay? <laughs> I'm okay, you're okay, don't worry. Okay, talking about okay, we're gonna hit the, hit the button here now. This is the one out of the radio. Yeah, it's not particularly good either. It's just uh, under the thousand uh, point. So it's actually a little weak. Okay, don't mix them up now. This is, this is the point where I mix them up. <laughs> Every point is where I mix them up. This is, well, you know, I can't mix them up. Mine has a check mark on it, a green check mark. Somewhere in its journey through life, somebody stuck a green check mark on it. Okay, Mr. Checkmarked Tube. In you go. So I see this as an opportunity to improve my knowledge of how, how radios work, and especially how they don't work. You're going to find lots of information here and there on how radios work, of course, and how anything works, but try to find information on how something doesn't work. And you can. I'm not saying it isn't there, but it's not as common as uh, explaining how it should work. After all, these radios basically work one way. I mean, most devices kind of have one way of working, and they have 15,000 ways of breaking down. <laughs> hey, here's something that'll freak you out, talking about odds and stuff like that. My dad was a big bridge player. He loved playing bridge. Bridge is a card game. Four people sit around the table. They deal out all the cards. 52 cards, 13 to each person like this. They pick up the cards and they start playing the game. All over North America and the world, people play this game. So there are probably, right now, there are probably thousands of people playing bridge, dealing out the cards, picking up their hands. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you, okay? You can check out and see, check this and see if I'm telling you the truth. The chances of the same hands being dealt out is almost zero. The chances of the same hands being dealt out ever is extremely low. The chances that my father, as he played bridge, ever experienced the same hand twice, his hand and the other four, is pretty much zero. 52 cards, four people, four piles, 13 cards. There's so many possibilities that the chances of the same thing occurring is almost nil. Isn't that a shocker? That's a shocker to me. That means every time you sit down to play bridge, every hand that gets dealt out is different. Always. Forever. You never face the same thing twice. Yeah, your, your personal hand might be the same, but then something will be different in the other hands. Isn't that something? Now that really, you know, another interesting one is how many ways can you seat 10 people around a table? And you might think, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 ways? Well, it's something like 1,200. I, I, I'm not sure again of the number, but it's a huge number. When you hear it, you go, what? Yeah, there's that many different ways. So, so we, we live in a world in which, or universe really, where the possibilities are just literally limitless, limitless possibilities of stuff. I guess that's not that surprising, is it? <laughs> okay, enough talking. Let's get back to doing this. Tube is in. Meter's not turned on. Meter's on. This meter I'm not using, but I'll turn it on anyway. Okay, what we hope to see right on this meter is a zero. Let's put it to six volts. Here we go. No, we're not plugged in. Not plugged in. Okay. Visible means of separation of the conductors. That's a safety thing. It's one thing to rely on a switch. The switch is hidden from view, what's going on inside it. But when you pull the plug out, you can see the prongs. There's no question. That's a... Uh, electrical safety principle. So here we go. We're hoping to see a zero on that meter. Are we not? I'm reading grid to cathode. 
No, no, we're not hoping to see zero. Grit to cathode, we're hoping to see minus seven. Something like that. I don't know if it's going to get there. It's pretty similar to the last one, isn't it? At the last one, we left it operating, and this fell to minus 2.9 or something like that. So we're going to let this play for a while. Talking about play. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this on. I'll turn it up a little bit so I don't forget. Goes on over here. Just leave it running like that, and uh, I'll, I'll come back after some coffee. We'll see where we're at. 5.2 looks pretty steady. 5.2. Oh, you know what? Before I go, we can read the grid voltage directly. I even turned the meter on. So I'm going to read it directly. Minus, so this is grid voltage to B minus. Grid voltage to B minus. What are you doing up there already? Coming out on zero. Let me short it out here. Okay, just a touch above zero here. You can't get it down there. That's kind of weird. Okay, grid is here. Point 0.3 volt scale. So the grid is point 0.7 volts. Point, no, point 0.3, point 0.3, point 0.24, point 0.2, very low. Okay, I'll leave it running. We're down a little bit. We were at 5.2 before. This is dropping now. No, it's going up. I don't know. Let me go drink coffee and come back. Give it five minutes here. Okay, let's see what we got here. So five volts. Looks pretty steady now. And if we read the grid, and I have this, uh, so a negative reading is upscale. Turned it off. <laughs> Let's try it again. One volt full scale. Okay. Point 0.2. Point 0.2 volts. Minus five. Point 0.2 volts. Well, point 0.2 volts is not very much. You know, taking it away from five volts. Let's just measure the cathode voltage again. It should be around five. Oh, oh, around five. Whoops. That's a ten volt scale, so straight up. Yeah. So you see, it's just a little above five. Take away the two, the point two. You get this. Minus five. The book said minus seven, minus five. It's not going wild like it was. Like it's not rising, rising up forever. Because I was seeing two volts, wasn't I? Wasn't I seeing two volts negative? We're gonna have to repeat it with the original tube now. So let me. I'm gonna write this stuff down because my uh, I got a great memory, but it's very short. Um, let me write it down here. mistake. So we'll say grid with this tube we get the grid to B minus voltage. I can't see it there. 0.3 volts on full scale there. Yeah 0 0.24, 0.23 minus 0.2 Three, and then the bias voltage is actually shown here, minus 5.03. Wow, that's a that's that's a crazy precision. Okay, we're going to switch the tube back to the original and do this again. Do it again. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I didn't have this flipped. I didn't have this flipped up. Flip it up. Flip it up, Jim. 
we didn't have the thing on full voltage here. Full voltage being uh, 112, which is actually a touch low. So this has gone up a little bit. And probably this other one went up a little bit. Okay, so 2.5 and 5.6. That's what I really want to write down. 2.5 5.6. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to let the two cool off, then I'm going to switch them. And we'll repeat this, and I'll have notes this time to compare to, so I'll be sure. While I'm uh, switching tubes here, I'm going to talk a bit. Just watching uh, Lewis Black. Lewis Black is a, a comedian who's been around for the longest time. He's known for being pretty crude his uh, presentations and uh, I was watching him do some routine and in it he started mentioning the middle class, the middle class. I have something to say here. If you want to understand society, you'll never understand it if you think the middle class has something to do with money. That you got the lower class, the middle class and the upper class and it's money, money, money. You'll never understand how society operates with that model. Because the middle class has nothing to do with money. Upper class, nothing to do with money. Even the working class, nothing to do with money. Although on average, you do get these bands, okay, of, of income. But that's not what it's about. It's about what you're doing that fits you into a class. So, are you doing a job in which you have a supervisor and he tells you when to come to work, where to work, what materials to use, how to do the job, you've been trained by him? and they watch over how you're doing the work, you're a worker. If on the other hand you're responsible for other people's work, if you're a supervisor or a manager, if you're in that kind of level, you're middle class. And if you own the shop, you're in the upper class, the owning class. So you've got working class, managing class, owning class. Now it's not quite that simple because if you think of a small uh, corner store, the people who own it often are the ones who work in it, often are the ones who hire other people, supervise their work with. They are all three at once. They're the owners, they're the workers, and they're in the middle. They're in the middle as a, a management of, uh, or supervisor of other workers. So if you see the world that way, if you break the world up using those definitions, and I'm not making these definitions up, these are the proper definitions for working class, managing class, owning class. But politicians throw around this middle class, everybody wants to be in the middle class. So what they're really talking about is middle income. But they should not use the word class. And it's just kind of fuzzed over this whole structure of society by using these terms improperly, constantly. Everybody using them improperly. Yeah, People in the working class can make more money than people in the uh, managing class, it can happen. Sure, it can happen. And goodness knows, people in the owning class can end up the poorest of all, although that's not normal, but it's possible. They could end up the poorest of all if the business isn't going well. So there you go. And next time you hear somebody say, middle class, ask yourself right then and there, are they talking about income? Or are they talking about actual class in society? Chances are they're just talking about income. And you know what? There's no definition. Even on this income, middle income people, what's at the bottom? What's at the top? There's no definition. Nothing. It's terrible. We need to talk with precision. And the reason we need to talk with precision is so others can tell us precisely where we're going wrong. If you don't talk with precision, you don't give the other guy any opportunity to point out the fallacy of your thinking. And you need that. You need people to tell you, hey, you're wrong there so you can get on the right track. But people run around talking at this high, high, vague level and there's no way to point out what's wrong with what they're saying. And so they never hear it. There you go. Man, am I ever preachy. Holy smokes. <laughs> and now, did I say something about mixing up the tubes? Right. Check mark. So we're putting back in the original tube. And we're going to see what happens. Got it in there. Plus, it's a it's a Delco. Right? I'm sure I don't have another Delco tube in my shop. Okay, let's fire it up. I'm all fired up. 
Shame on me. chance we're on full voltage here full volt 113 volts looks like it's heading to the same place doesn't it the numbers were 5.6 on here and 0.25 on the other let's see 0.25 so point so this is floating up here because this is not connected. That's that's why the meter is not going down to zero. So if I if I short it, it'll go down to almost zero. For some reason, it won't go all the way. So up here, but so I'm reading oh I'm a three 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 scale point three scale. So we're getting point two five. Maybe, maybe I was out by a factor of 10 there when I was reading this the other time because I thought we had two volts on there. Did I say something about chasing ghosts? Oh, I do that from time to time. It's moving up. This is, this is moving up. Yeah, the radio's not crackling the, anymore. See, the other one didn't move up like this. Now, how can this, how can this one move up? This one's not... Oh, it is going down. Okay, I'm going to leave this. I don't. I didn't finish the Lewis Black video. He's attacking American politicians, one in particular. Can you guess who? Okay, so it's been about five minutes. Now look at that. So this bias, remember, according to the book, should be minus, point, uh, minus 7 volts. And it's, it's going down. It's going up and down. So once again, I'm going to switch back to the alternate tube. There's the check mark. And leave this radio running for a long time. And see if it doesn't hold up. Because it's certainly not holding up with this tube. Oh boy. What is going on? So you can you kind of see what would happen here with a radio like this. You'd change that capacitor if you, if you didn't do with it this kind of testing. You'd change that capacitor and uh, pat yourself on the back. And problem solved, but maybe not. Maybe there's more to it. And as I said, this is the second radio that uh, that I've encountered this kind of thing. And I'd really like to understand it better. I'm not even sure what thing it is I'm encountering. But it does appear to be the tube. Something about the tube. It, it, oh, that's good. Put the screwdriver through the speaker there. Yeah. So one of the things I try not to do is do just what I did. Hold a tool in my hand while I'm doing something. Especially the soldering iron. I, I try not to do that try being the operative word there. Okay, here we go. One more time. Give it the juice. Okay, I'm just going to leave it here operating. Uh, maybe we should let it warm up and take some initial note, note, make an initial note. I was going to say something, but I better not because because I don't know what I'm talking about yet. So she's way up there now, 5.6. That's the hang around spot. 5.63 is the measurement I took uh, with this tube last time that it seemed to be steady on. Okay, we're just going to leave it running there, and I shall return in five minutes or so. Okay, so I'm back in, and uh, look at that. 
And that's the number that's written on my note page. So it really looks like the original tube is somehow responsible for wrecking its own bias. Now this tube tested weaker than the tube that's in there now. This bias is probably sufficient uh, you know, to operate the, the radio fine. I don't know. I don't know what... what uh, I'm sure people will be writing comments on this video about what they think is going on, and that's great. That's really great. Please do that. But for me, I think what I have to conclude here is we better put leave this tube in and uh, and move on from here, I think. Let me just... So we want to look at the... Uh, this is the grid voltage. should be the same voltage as this. Let's see. What happened here? Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, no. We should get the same reading here. Minus. What happened here? What have I done? So run. Volt scale. Oh, this is on AC. How'd that get on AC? Last time, I, oh, every reading I've done has been wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if there's a way of doing this wrong, I'm liable to find it. So let's see. We've got we've got something dumb here. We've got this on B minus. This is not B minus. This is the cathode. Okay, so we got cathode. So we're reading now. Think, man. Think. B minus voltage on the grid. 0.3 volts full scale. It's a positive voltage. There's the 0.2 again. How did I get that with this set to AC? Okay, interesting. Well, that's just a wild coincidence that having it on AC, you still get the same reading, or what? Or is there an AC voltage there? There, 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 there can be. There can be a signal voltage there. Signal voltage. You got the signal voltage greater than the bias. What would happen then? The signal voltage is greater than the bias. So let's say this is zero volts, and you've got the grid operating negative down here. I'll put my thumb there. And then you have, so as you have this much room to run an, a signal into it. But what happens if you go too high? The grid voltage will go positive. But at that point, it becomes a little plate and starts absorbing electrons. Well, that makes it go negative. There's this self-biasing effect in grids where it, as, as much as, as you might not want it to happen in your vacuum tube, electrons will strike the grid and get on the grid and, and cause a charge to build on it. That's a negative charge. I'm reading a positive. I don't know what to say. I don't think, I think that the radio is safe to operate at length the way it is now because this is stable and there's enough bias here. There's there's some bias here. I don't know why you're gonna have to think about this really hard. What is it about a tube that's causing this effect? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, don't have to know everything. I think that's it for today. Kind of a runaround, kind of a weird experiment. Um, wish I knew exactly what was happening here, but I don't. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, tomorrow we're going to get on with some other issues in this radio. I'm not that I think there's lots of issues, but there's some big capacitors there that probably should be changed out. We'll look into that and try to finish up the uh, restoration, the component type restoration of the radio. See where we get. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, see you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.